It's time for action and, and not talk. Um, I think we've talked enough and we need to go out and uh, do things and act. So at, at the East African Development Bank, um, the challenges that we are facing arising out of uh, the climate uh, warming are rather inverse to probably what is being felt in the Northern Hemisphere. First of all, the majority of the farmers or the business people uh, engage in activities that are not harmful to the environment simply because they're very small scale. Yeah. Um, so these are cottage industries or they are farmers who um, undertake subsistence farming, which they have done for generations. And they do that within the context of the environment they live in. Mm -hmm. So we don't have situations of large forests being cut down uh, to be converted into agricultural land simply because the farmers won't afford it, first of all, to do that. But secondly, the forests belong to government. Mm -hmm. So these are people living around the forest and looking after the habitat they live in. The challenge we are facing, rather, is because of activities elsewhere, there is a change in the weather patterns which are affecting small-scale farmers. Most of them rely on on rain, yeah. so the agriculture is rain fed, they expect the rain to come in at a particular time of the year, and when it's delayed, there's a problem, mm -hmm. and they expect to be harvesting at a particular time of the year, and then when that is delayed, there's also a problem because the crop stays in the farm too long and begins to rot or begins to develop um, fungal, um, in, uh, fungal uh, 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 spores around it, if it's maize or millet, or, so that's been a big problem. And what we've decided to do at the East African Development Bank is to focus on the needs of individuals, be they farmers or small-scale business people, male or female, wherever they are. Mm. So we're not adopting the model where we expect people to walk into the bank and fill in a form and provide us with collateral, which we then go out and assess and carry out a risk analysis, price the loan, and then uh, disperse it, because that will not work for a majority of the people of East Africa. Many of them live in very remote areas where uh, a, a journey to the bank would probably cost them yeah. uh, half their year's uh, income. Yeah. And if they're women, that may not be really viable because they're required or because of their circumstances, they have to stay at home, look after children and look after their families. So what we've done is to take the facility to them, wherever they are, in the circumstances they are in. So it's more like, I think, like a Grameen model, but really tailored to individuals. So we, we set up a, a special fund within the bank. This is a development bank, so we tend to lend, lend to government significant sums of money, but we've set aside a special fund which uh, deals primarily with the farmers and the business people in East Africa to lend them money, small amounts of money, whatever money they need, so there's no minimum, and there's no maximum either in the fund. There is no paperwork. We use uh, technology, we use um, FinTech, so we were able to disperse the money on a mobile phone, mm -hmm. and typically these are very, very small loads, uh, a thousand, equivalent to a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds, and we do that over the telephone as, uh, over a period of time, and they also repay us back through the same medium. So if it's a, um, a mother with her children and she's carrying out some cottage industry, she doesn't have to make a, a 50 kilometer journey to the bank. And we found that that has been a model that has worked for us mm -hmm. and has helped us to uh, provide these facilities at scale. Mm -hmm. So currently we have about 15,000 uh, loans of that nature, which we disburse through uh, FinTech and through partnerships with about 10 banks. We wouldn't have been able to do that if there wasn't the, the fintech. But the point we're making here, and we've d dispensed with requirements for uh, security. The, the security is the, uh, the community. that You need to get a, a, a reference or a recommendation from your community peers. And the fact that if you uh, do not repay the loan, then obviously you develop a negative credit history and you won't be able to borrow, not just from us, but from other banks. And we found that that is a very good way of encouraging uh, discipline and repayment. So our loans were paid very well even during the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. Our default rate was probably 2% or so. Most Excellent. of the loans, yes, they were, they were fully paid. And the last point I want to make on this is that there is funding 
uh, typically given to small farmers, business people, microcredit, micro loans, but they are very expensive mm. because the risk that is priced into the loan is very, very high. And that obviously sets up uh, the borrower to fail. So we've done away with that. We are pricing the loan at cost only, the, what it costs us to grant the loan. Mm -hmm. And a, a little margin to ensure that we create a revolving fund, and that's all. So typically, we are actually lending be below government bond rates, which is unusual. So we are lending to our clients cheaper than we would lend, say, to the government of Kenya or to the government of Uganda. Yeah. And we found that this really has the impact uh, that we, we desire. Thank yeah. you.